Hello there, Ray here. This machine here is a must-have for any Minecraft world. It produces infinite amounts of bone meal, fuel source, XPs, and all these vegetation items. And you can expand this as big as you want. Plus, it runs all on its own without the player even having to be there. I'll show you how to build this up while pointing out how it works. Now leave a like on the video and let's get started. Starting out, we need about a 16 by 16 area to work in. Then press F3 plus G. And this will show us the chunk border. What we're going to do is come up to the edge of here. And three blocks in from this side, we're going to place in our first block. Then we're going to place seven on either side. I designed this farm to be simple, cheap, as well as easily expandable. You'll want to build this in a place that's often loaded, such as your spawn chunks in single player. Now we're going to do the same thing, but up one level and this direction. Starting like this makes the entire machine fit depth-wise inside of a chunk. Then place redstone on all of this. This bottom piece is for the stone generator. Then normal pistons on top of all of this redstone. And blocks on top of all of this redstone. Now we'll do the same thing on the opposite side over here. The stair stepping redstone is pointing into the pistons to power them. Now in the end we're going to place in the water right here. We're going to do this to the opposite side as well. These edges are for holding in the water which is needed to produce the stone. And right here in the center where there is no water we're going to remove that block, that redstone, and that redstone. And we're going to place in a repeater here. Then place in a block there. And then place in a water source. Now place pistons on this back side. With the spaced out water and the slower stone generator, you can safely unload the chunks it's inside of without having to turn it off. And two blocks above each of our water sources. These are to protect the water and marks the edge of each section. Now put some temporary blocks in at this level here. And then put any block you want on top of that. This is to hold back the lava and it's also going to hold the water on top of it. Now we'll come in and remove this middle piston that's above the repeater. And then we're going to place a block over top of this water to protect it. Now we can come in and place in the lava by putting it in four blocks from that side and we'll do the same thing to this side, four blocks in and place just like that. This will convert all of the water into stone underneath. Now we're going to place a row of blocks. This is to protect the lava and to also hold the water. We're going to put redstone dust on top of all of these blocks and we'll come back here to the center and swap out this one with a repeater. Now we're going to place in our water log trap doors. We'll face this direction and place in the trap doors like this. These trap doors will open and close to release water which will use to wash away the moss vegetation. Now we're going to put walls at the either end of the entire machine. So at the level of the stone we're going to go up three and we're going to continue this wall of three blocks a total of ten block distance. This is to prevent the flowing water from coming off the side and also to keep the items that the water washes off as well as the moss blocks from popping off and falling outside of the farm. And then we'll do the exact same thing on this side over here. These walls are only needed at the very ends of either side of the farm. You can have as many sections in between these as you need. Now we'll come in and waterlog these trap doors. First we'll open them and then we'll place a bucket here. Then we'll go to the second one and do the same thing. Open it, place a bucket. And then the third one we will open and then refill our buckets. This works because water sources are actually able to fill blocks in between that are waterloggable. Alternatively, you could put down spaced out ice, then break all that, then put in the trap doors later. Now we're going to place a row of solid blocks across the entire thing. This is where we'll have the redstone to open and close the trap doors. I designed the redstone to make it easy so you can expand for more sections. And once again, we'll come into the center one and swap out that for a repeater. Now at the end of this glass, the same level as the temporary blocks over there, we're going to place in a row of immovable blocks. This is going to be a total of seven, and then we're going to have a spacer, and then another seven blocks. This could be furnaces, crying obsidian, anything that can't be pushed by pistons. Now we're ready to put in the clock for the stone generator. We're going to come over here and place in a 2x2 two two block. We're going to place in a repeater on 4, another one on 4, one going the opposite direction on 4, and this one on 3. Then we're going to place a block there with a redstone torch there and a light source on top. This will go over to a block as well as another block with redstone on top. Now this produces a clock and by putting a lever here and flipping it this will turn it off. Now we'll finish off by putting a piston here with an observer pointing. Now we go ahead and turn on and it should activate the stone generator. Looking good. Now let's bring the redstone up so it activates the top pistons. We'll place some blocks here and then we'll have to come in and swap out this block with a block that won't cut redstone such as stair or glass. We'll continue this over by one then up by one and up by another one. Then we'll come in and place in redstone dust here, 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 and a repeater right here. Now this activates the top pistons and you can see they're producing stone. The stone's getting pushed into this large platform. Once it's filled in, you can then fill in this hole with any type of block you want. 
and remove this block. Now we're going to come underneath of this obsidian and we're going to place in a row of blocks across the entire thing. And then another row that is one under as well as over across it. And then we're going to come over here and put in a three high wall that goes across this entire thing. This trough that we're making is going to contain the water stream, which is going to collect all the items and bring them to one location. The wall is extra tall to prevent items from landing on top of it as well. So that should look like this. Now we'll come to the division here. On the left hand side of this, we'll place in our ice. Then we'll place a top slab on top of that. Sign our banner over here. Then we're placing our water source there as well as right there. And it'll be just like this between every single one of these sections. On the very end row, we can come in and cap this off and place in water to finish it off. Next is the item elevator where we'll come to the very end of all of the sections, placing in some ice, then some top slabs, then box off both sides. This will go into a soul sand with the blocks on all three sides and a water source in the center. We're then going to stack up six blocks above each of these four sides. This is to make a bubble elevator to bring the vegetation items to the top of the farm where they will be bone milled. And we're going to place in water sources inside of this too. At the top here we're going to place one block on this side and two blocks on this side and one block right here. Now we're going to go this direction where we're going to take blocks all the way across the entire length of this build. We're going to do the same thing with this here all the way across. This will be used to hold the water stream. On the opposite side we're going to do walls and those are going to go all the way across. The walls are used to keep items to hang partly off the edge. Then two last walls are going to be removed and replaced in with a double chest. The chest is used to cheaply align the items. Then right over here we're going to knock out this block, place in ice, and then place in a top slab above it. Now we can go ahead and remove this block and the water should flow and turn that direction. Now we can place in our water and once we get to the center mark here, we'd also remove this block, place in ice, and place in our top slab. And continue this process as long as your thing is. Then place a block over top of this water elevator. Now to put in the moss bone milling part, we'll come to the center of each section, place in a hopper here, a composter underneath, a block at the hopper height, a piston at the composter height, a dispenser underneath of that, a hopper pointing into that, and a moss block in front of the dispenser. Now you do this for each of the sections. Hopper will pull the item vegetation out of the water stream. I'll then push it into the composter which will convert it into bone mill. The bone mill will then be pulled out of the bottom hopper and pushed into the dispenser. The piston is going to be powered from the block above it and the dispenser is going to get quasi connectivity powered from that same block as well as updated from the piston so it can bone mill. And the dispenser is pointing into a moss block which when it activates this bone mill is going to convert the stone that's two blocks underneath of it into moss blocks as well as vegetation. Once done we're going to connect all of these components together with a single redstone. First we've placed blocks going out the ends of each of these and then on top of that we're going to place redstone across all of it. Redstone dust doesn't create lag like it used to but you can use whatever way you want to transmit the signal and every time we go between sections we're going to replace the redstone with a repeater. Now all we need to do is connect this clock down here with this new redstone component. This redstone is only for the very first section. We'll place in a block there now go into this block up here, then we'll place a block there as well as a top slab there, remove that one, and this one will go into a block. Now we place redstone dust on top of those three, and a repeater here on two tick. Now we'll shift click a block up against that, and put a torch on top of that with another block on top of there. We're then going to start a ring of hoppers, we're going to go this way with a two, then one this way, and then two going this way, we'll then remove that one and finish it off so that they're going in a complete circle. Then we're going to place redstone dust on top of this entire thing. You can place droppers then redstone dust. Now we come in and we place in a sticky piston on that block facing this composter here. This will move the composter back and forth which will turn on and off the water. Now to get the farm started all we have to do is place some bone mill into one of the dispensers and it will slowly fill all the rest. To speed up the filling process you can come in here and place in some space holders in the last four slots. This is done to each of the hoppers that are receiving the vegetation. You're almost done. We just need to put in the four main uses for this farm. Let's start by extending this water stream. And while we do that, make sure you guys are subscribed with the bell turned on as I have tons of simple farm designs on my channel and I've created a farm for almost every item in the game Minecraft. You can check those all out and my current progress with this document link below. The first one is to make an infinite fuel source as well as XP farm. We'll first put in a hopper facing into the block. Then we'll place in a block over here and two more. One over and under, and three more going this way. Now we'll have a comparator right here. We'll have redstone going down this, a repeater going this direction into a block, and a torch on the opposite side. 
Then we'll come over here and place in a hopper directly underneath and a chest underneath of that. Then we'll come in here and we'll place in four blocks. And in the first slot, we'll place in our azalea bush. Now we can repeat this process for the second azalea tree type. A two section farm like this one will produce this much vegetation in just one hour. This is equivalent to 600 bone mill per hour or 300 per section. And once again, place in four spacer blocks. But this time the flowering azalea goes in the first slot. Now we put in our furnaces here and then we connect our fuel sources directly to the backs. Then we place our hoppers on top with the chest on top for the items that we want to smelt. Now we can put in our collection for the output of these furnaces. Just hoppers underneath going directly into a chest. And then your floor will be right here. Then you can have two levers to lock the hoppers. So at any point you want, you can lock this hopper. And then once you pull this item out, in this slot here, you will get all the XP's from that item plus all the previous ones, give you an infinite source of fuel as well as XP. So having this in an often loaded area with a cobblestone farm or other smeltable items being fed into the top automatically can make a great XP farm without additional work. You can also use this to get unlimited bone mill just by putting a hopper here and a compost underneath, then a chest right here with a hopper pointing to that. Or you can just collect everything as items by putting a hopper and a chest here. Then we place in levers here, here, and here, and we can lock those hoppers. Now everything will go directly into the last one where you get the items of the moss block, the carpet, as well as both azaleas and even wheat seeds. Check out this playlist for more simple and efficient farms. For this playlist where I'm challenging myself by making a farm for every item in the game Minecraft. Remember you can watch me live as I design all these contraptions over at my Twitch stream where I stream every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much for liking the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!